Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our midweek worship service tonight. We thank the Lord for giving us this opportunity that in the middle of the week, we can uh, have this time to worship the Lord, to commune with Him, to reflect upon His Word, and to also be reminded of how great and good God is. Let us also uh, extend our birthday greetings to our celebrators this week as well as those who are celebrating their wedding anniversary. It is our prior for you to continue to enjoy good health, uh, happy relationship with each other and with your family as you also enjoy and continue growing in the Lord. For tonight, let us now prepare our hearts and our minds as we come to worship the Lord. Good evening. Welcome once again to our midweek service. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. Yes, wherever you've been, whatever you've done, God loves you and will never let you go. Let's sing to our God. Once I was lost, wandering in darkness, no life inside, no hope inside. He called my name, He healed my blindness, set me ablaze, now I'm alive with His love breaking through my heart of stone, love breaking to wake my bones, love reaching out to save my soul, love never gonna let me go. So full of worship, I can't hold back, I can't contain it, for all is done, Jesus my Savior, I am a blaze, and full of thanks for, it's love breaking through my heart of stone, love breaking to awake my bones, Love reaching out to save my soul. Love never gonna let me go. Love calling me as I am. Love making me new again. Love lifting me when I can. Love never gonna let me go. Wherever you've been, whatever you've done, come as you are. Come as you are, and 
shall find his love. Father God, thank you for being our Savior. of God is reached for me and pulled me from the raging sea and I am safe on this solid ground the Lord is my salvation Oh, yeah.
Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrificial death on the cross. May we walk in dependence of the Holy Spirit who lives in us to help us resist the virus of sin. So one day we will stand faultless before the presence of God with exceeding joy. In our lives, out of gratefulness, may we be able to help others by telling them of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and of His undying love that they so desperately need. Amen. Our scripture reading is found in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 to 12. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The Lord bless us as we meditate on those words. Once again, good evening. We will be meditating tonight about uh, being a man of God in relation to our celebration of the Fellowship of the Biggest Coin uh, led by the United Church men last Sunday. And we are so filled with wonderful message from God through Dr. Neil Porakan on Titus 2, 1 to 2, uh, exhorting all men to be taught to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance, which is very much related with our text tonight. In our Bible text, Paul turns his attention from negatively warning against false teachers to positively exhorting Timothy to be faithful in the ministry. In verse 11, we read, we read But as for you, O man of God, so we see that Paul directly addresses Timothy here, and notice that he refers to him as a man of God. What does man of God mean? Well, it can mean a man who believes in God, and this can be applied to all believers. All believers are called to be men and women of God. As followers of Christ, we are to love God. We are to worship and serve Him in all that we do, living lives of holiness before Him. All Christians or God-believing men are men of God, and all Christian or God-believing women are women of God, or at least they should be, or at least we should be. It is sometimes used in the scriptures to refer to leaders with Old Covenant Israel and the New Covenant Church. Moses was called the man of God in Deuteronomy 33 verse 1. Prophets like I like Elijah, were called, they were called men of God. So when Paul called Timothy a man of God, it was to remind him not only that he was a Christian man, but that he was a man set apart for Christian ministry. He was a minister within Christ's church. So Paul used it to remind Timothy about his calling in his belief in God. So we must keep this in mind. What Paul says here, he says to Timothy, the Christian man and minister. And it applies to all Christians generally, men and women, young and old, to be a man of God. But in some aspect, it also applies especially to Christian ministers. 
Paul uses active and forceful verbs to describe the Christian life. Flee, pursue, fight, take hold. Some think Christianity is a passive religion. Kanang, wala lang. Uh, kung ano sa alang ka, ganahan. Uh, kung ganahan lang ka, uh, mo tininuod sa imuhang uh, dapat buhaton as a believer. Uh, ingon ana ang pagtanaw sa uban nga passive lang uh, daghan mamalibad no nga di pa ko ready uh, not this time siguro next month next year but we must have an active faith we need training we need to work hard we need to do some sacrifice and doing what we know is right Christian service, like athletics, requires training and service and sacrifice. Our discipline and obedience largely defined whether or not we will be contributors or merely spectators. Now, so in the church, we are not only we are not called to be Christians to be just sit and and be an audience, uh, just a spectator all your life. We are called also to be contributors in the ministry, in mission, in whatever work and in whatever activities that the church is doing. Just so we will also grow in our service to the Lord and also in our faith. First, in this text, Paul told Timothy, that Timothy, being a man of God, should flee from all this. Flee from these things, Paul says. So what are those things? Those things are in the previous, are stated in the previous text. Love of money. No? So to flee from love of money. To flee from discontentment. To flee from pride. And a quarrelsome disposition. All who are in Christ must flee from all these things, but specially ministers within Christ's church, or for all those who are serving the Lord. For when they stumble in these things, the damage to the congregation and the name of Christ can be very great. Brothers and sisters, we are told to run away from sin, even those sins that reside within the heart and mind. Another thing is from fleeing from sin, from fleeing from all these things that will hinder us from becoming effective uh, servers of the Lord, we are also told to pursue. What are those things that we need to pursue? First is to pursue righteousness. Christ did not only die to remove the stain of our guilt, but also to make us holy and sanctify us according to the truth. And his desire is that we would not only run away from doing evil in thought, in word, and in deed, but what we do, would also do is to do what is right in Christ Jesus. To pursue something means to strive after it intentional good in in doing what is right with intense effort and with a purpose you know, with a definite purpose or goal another thing that we need to pursue as a people of God or for a man of God is to pursue godliness it is the quality or practice of conforming to the laws and and the will of God it also means devoutness and moral uprightness. So to becoming godly, to becoming like Christ, to always do what is in accord to the will of God and what is in accord to the biblical teachings that we ought to do as his people, as people who are professing to be believers and followers of Jesus Christ. 
the third thing that we have to that a man of God is to pursue is to pursue faith. Faith here refers to trust in God through Christ, to walk by faith and not by sight. We already have faith in Christ the moment we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior and the, mo the moment we commit our lives to God. Now, in this text, we are encouraged to walk by faith and to pursue even greater faith. Kanang mutubo pa jud ta diha sa atong pagtuo. Kanang muhamtong ta diha sa atong pagtuo. Kanang mulambo ta diha sa atong pagtuo. O kanang mahimo tang mabungahon diha sa atong pagtuo. That we will not stagnate and that we will not be content with what state we are in our spiritual life. We need to to really grow in maturity in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that this, we are also to grow in knowledge of God and the promises of His Word. It means to live a life of obedience to God, being moved by faith in God and His promises. We are called to live faithfully, being freed and empowered to live courageously in this world because we trust in God. We are to trust in His promises. We are to trust that He will accomplish all of His purposes in us. We are to trust that He will keep, He will bring us safely into His eternal kingdom. And in, and in our prayer, like that man in Mark 9.24, when he said, I believe, help my unbelief. So we need to keep pursuing faith, to dig deeper into our faith, to grow higher in our faith, and to be broader in our perspective and understanding of our faith in relation to other people and in relation to God. Another thing that we need to pursue is to pursue love. Love refers to love for God and our fellow men. God is love, we are taught in 1 John 4, 8. And love is to be the distinguishing characteristics of the Christian. The Christian is to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, mind, and strength. And the Christian is to love his neighbor as himself. So in John 4, 7, it says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God has made manifest among us that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Be beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and His love is perfected in us. In, we can find that in 1 John 4, 7-12. to 12. So the, the distinguishing characteristic of a Christian is love. Loving ourselves, loving God as we also love our neighbors, our fellow men. So we are taught to love just as the way God loves us unconditionally, even when we are not deserving of His love. And yet God manifested or demonstrated His love towards us, even when we, are, when we were yet sinners. Another, things that, another thing that a man of God should pursue is endurance. It is the ability to continue to bear up under difficult circumstances. Kanang kabalong mulahutay, kanang bahalag lisod nga kahimtang dili, dayon mo, give up. So, isa ni sa mga kinaiya nga medyo lisod 
lisod na kay nato makita karon nga panahon nga mga instant mga internet just by the clicking of our at the tip of our fingers we can find uh, informations na no? gani kung maglag ang internet murag wala nay dili na makaantos ang mga tao lisod mo kanang lisod kayo ang ang patience ba no so like for example gatuyok-tuyok pa kudugay kaayo galag ang internet no madungog na dai na tong reklamo hinaya oy no or some some would even post in facebook nga something related to ayuhan na inyo hang mga signal kay hinay kaayo gabayad mig tarong and yet the services is not that good no so kanig yud kaning endurance or bisan pa sa atong mga kabataan karon where life seem to be very easy uh, lisod na kayo ang endurance kung sa unang panahon kung mangiskwela kinahanglan mo baktas og tag isa ka kilometro tulo lima para moadto sa eskwelahan no unya di pa na mga absent kay bahalag magbaktas basta kay maka eskwela jud Pero karon nga mga panahon, dili pwede ihatod pagyod, no? Ihatod, iplaster dito sa eskwelahan, sundoon na pud pagkahapon. Ing ana jud ang kahimtang, no? So we have to really uh, teach our younger generation to endure to endure this this quality of kanang mulahutay, no? Moagwanta. To endure is to suffer something painful or difficult patiently. To keep believing and serving. To keep doing God's word. To keep doing God's work without giving up until we get to fulfill what needs to be done or what needs to be reached in, even in the face of difficulty. So, labi na sa ato ang pagtuo, pagsalig, pag-alagad sa ginoon ni ining panahon karon. Another thing that a man of God needs to pursue is gentleness. Sa akong gisulti kaganiha, dali ra kay ma-impatient ang mga tao. Kung ma-impatient na gani, most likely mo taas ng tingog, maningka na, isog na, masuko na, dali ra dayon masuko. But here, we are told to pursue gentleness. It is the quality of being kind, tender, or mild-mannered. It also means kindness. All Christians are to pursue gentleness. It is essential that ministers or it is essential that Christians be gentle. This was one of the qualifications for elders. No, kung atong mahinom duman. An elder must not be violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money, according to 1 Timothy 3.3. Ministers must be gentle because they are called to serve hurting people or even members of the church. We must be gentle because we are dealing with hurting people. We, know, we do not know what people are going through. So as they, as we meet them, we should be in a spirit of ministering to them. And even when a minister have to rebuke kaning mga pasaway, the rebellious, they are to do it in humility, in kindness, and with self-control. We are to rebuke, we are to correct with love other people who needs to be corrected or or those who needs to be rebuked so it is with gentleness that we can help people that we can minister to people just so they will be brought into the presence of God and they will embrace the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so for all of this we are told in verse 12 to fight the good fight of faith it involves, it gives us the summary, for it means running from sin, running away from sin, and pursuing things such as righteousness, godliness, faith, 
love, endurance, and gentleness. It is making a choice to pursue God's will and live a life of faith on a daily basis. It means to abide in God's word by faith, regardless of circumstance or situation. And finally, we are also told to take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So we are to take hold of the assurance of eternal life that God has given us when we confess our faith in Him. And when, as we continue to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people, because we are also called to be witnesses of God's goodness and love. So for this, let us ask God for courage to stand, stand firmly in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, to flee from sin, to flee from all those things that hinder us in our service to the Lord, to pursue righteousness, to pursue godliness, to pursue faith, to pursue love, to pursue endurance, and to pursue gentleness. Let us ask the Lord to empower us that we will be able to do all this and that our lives will really be a blessing in our family, in our community, in the church, in our work, everywhere. Amen. Remember, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that the best part of a Christian life is when we are growing into the likeness of Jesus Christ, that we grow to be strong in our faith and firm in our stand as people of God. For all the wonderful things that God continues to do in our lives, let us come to Him with hearts overflowing with joy and thanksgiving, as we also take heed to the words of Deut Deuteronomy 16:17 telling us that each of us should give in proportion to the way the Lord our God has blessed us. As God has been so generous to us, let us also be generous in our thanksgiving for His goodness as we sing our closing hymn. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us tonight of how it is to be a man of God, of how it is to be a people of God. Thank you for reminding us and thank you for giving us this warning that as we follow you, we need to flee from sin and to turn to you, Lord, for help, for help and strength. Thank you for exhorting us, Lord, to pursue righteousness, to pursue godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. 
and to fight the good fight of faith, especially at this time when there are so many challenges ahead of us, beside us, and even wherever we go, Lord, there are really many challenges. And we also pray that you will make us strong and steadfast as we face, Lord, the trials of life. We pray, Father in heaven, that you will enable us, Lord, to stand firm in our faith and to do what is right before your sight. We pray, Father in heaven, and thank you for making us take hold of the eternal life to which you have given us when you sacrificed yourself, your son, at the cross of Calvary to save us. And thank you, Lord, for the faith that you have implanted in our hearts that we may continue to be a living witness, Lord, to people around us. That with boldness, we will always proclaim the joy of salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Father God, continue to bless each one of us, O oh Lord, in our desire to grow in you, in our desire, Lord, to have an intimate relationship with God as our Father. And as we also desire, Lord, to live peaceably with everyone. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, flee from sin, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which we were called. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.